We back, Fan Showdown, Season 6, Episode 5. And while I was making this episode of the Fan Showdown, I was actually thinking, didn't I just release a Fan Showdown not too long ago? Do I really want to make another one this close behind it? And then I was actually looking at my channel. And the last episode I released was way back in May. Oh, no. And I don't know why I got so confused. Maybe because I was messing with that Loeb fan design for so long and it was I, I got into that printing fans out for the fan showdown either way i have no concept of time any any longer it's crazy if you think that's good i should keep these fan showdowns spaced out maybe let me know in the comments down below but if you think that is absolutely unacceptable make sure to voice your concern in the comments down below and i'll be adjusting the timeline based on what you guys want to see but for now let's just let's just get into it actually one second i should probably mention this at the start of the video since it's been so long since the last fan showdown the fan showdown is a series i run on this channel where the viewers of the channel you guys out there submit your designs to me to compete in a season specific challenge to see who out there can come up with the best fan design and if you're interested in getting involved in this series on the channel make sure to go down to the description below there's links of resources to use to help you design a fan but specifically there is dimensions you need to make sure you hit so that your fan fits on the a12 x25 frame the the fan frame that we use as a test bench other than that basically anything else is up to you make whatever you think will perform the best or just make something you think will look cool and then take your design and submit to me at least a .stp or a .stl to the fan showdown at gmail.com I'll print it out, we'll test it against your peers, we'll see who comes up with the best fan design, or just who comes up with the coolest, most unique fan design, and now let's get into it. First up, we have a design that we've seen actually in the past. I've seen it actually quite a bit. A lot of people submit this design to me. This is the Honeycomb, and it was created by Sebastian. Although we've seen this design in the past seasons, and past episodes of the Fan Showdown, I thought it'd be fun to test it again in this season, because this season, we're focused on static pressure. Well, the reason being is that in static pressure testing, the fan's main job is not only to push air into the test chamber, but also limit the amount of backflow to achieve higher static pressure numbers. And because of the inherent design of Honeycomb, I thought this would lend itself better to static pressure than airflow. Will it work? Will that be true? I don't know, but it's back. And I see a lot of people submit this style fan, a honeycomb specific style fan. So I know you guys out there really want to know, is this, is this any good? Now, next up, we have the GE TF 34 X 25, which was created by Gnork, Gnork, Gnork. Everybody's got crazy names. Now, if this fan looks familiar to you along with its name, that's because the inspiration for this design was the General Electric TF 34. And if that doesn't help, that's the jet engine attached to the plane that goes Now, jet engine inspired fans are also quite popular on the channel. I've actually made one myself in the past that I then exploded. But I've always thought that, you know, jet engine style fans just look cooler. However, just like the honeycomb inspired designs in the past and airflow testing, these high blade density fans haven't really done that good. But again, this season we're focused on static pressure. So maybe, maybe this is, this is the day. However, I think there's a little bit of a caveat here. The fan modeled here is a representation of the high bypass fan on the GE TF34. And that fan's job is really to move a large volume of air much slower than the air passing through the core. The compression in a jet engine is performed in the core by the compressor section, which is comprised of compressor blades and stator vanes, which are all really essential to allowing an axial compressor to really function properly. But that being said, it looks cool. It's a jet engine style fan and having all the little blades close together should help it limit that backflow that we were talking about earlier and perform relatively well. Now this next one is called the YACF and it was created by Smoonkin. Now what does YACF stand for, you might ask? I have no idea. Smoonkin didn't say anything about the name. He, did, he really didn't say anything about the fan at all other than saying, here is yet another centrifugal fan. But what I like about this fan is that it's an assembly and for some reason, assembly fans make me good. And what I mean by assembly fans, it's basically comprised of a bunch of pieces that are all printed out separately and then they go together to make the final product. And I always like these for whatever reason, mostly because they make printing it a lot easier. If I was just to print this standard fan disc, there'd be a lot of overhangs and support material that need to be re removed. But since it's printed in pieces, I was able to print everything without support material. Ex well, except for the cover, but all the support material was on the outside, so it doesn't really matter. And it's still printed out relatively easily. And then I get to, you know, put it together and it looks cool. Now we have seen centrifugal style fans do pretty good on this specific season of the fan showdown. Think of the Wonder from Down Under, which is crushing it at the top right now at like eight millimeters of H2O. So I'm hoping that this one will carry that forward. Will it get that high? Uh, doubtful, but I'm hoping it'll do pretty good. Now, last up for the day, we have a fan that I think is pretty, pretty darn clever. 
and one that should do pretty darn good because it was tested before it was sent over. This is the Vortex 9 and it was created by Myo Mobiobi. Why, why are you guys so crazy with your names? I like this design because from the front it looks just like a standard axial fan, but when you see the backside of the fan, you're going to notice that it's almost completely closed off and you're probably thinking, how is a fan that's completely closed off in the back gonna do really anything? And it all has to do with how the A12X25 frame is designed and being just a little bit clever in your fan design. On the backside of the A12X25 frame is a slight chamfer. Using that feature, Myobi essentially turned this axial fan into a centrifugal fan. When the fan is fully seated into the A12X25 frame, you can see the small gap along the edge of the fan frame and that the fan disc sits slightly below that chamfer. This means that as the fan spins and pushes air through the fan frame and outwards, this small chamfer is going to help redirect that air rearwards into the test chamber. And with this small gap and the centrifugal force imparted on that air mass, this design should help climb that static pressure ladder. And you're probably like, great theory. Uh, you seem a little bit overconfident on how well you think this fan's gonna do, but that's because Myobi did his homework and sent me a little video of this fan actually inflating a plastic bag with two cans of soup on it. And you might be thinking two cans of soup isn't really that much, but for a PC fan, that's, that seems like a lot of weight. Now the video was sped up, but regardless the fan was able to inflate the bag and I'm pretty sure that a standard PC fan probably couldn't pull that off. We still should have a good chance or he should still have a good chance of getting pretty high on the board. But before we see how high it goes or low, which would be really funny, let's, uh, let's have a listen. The honeycomb came in around 44.4 dBA. The GETF 34X25 came in around 45.2. The YACF came in at 50.7 and the Vortex 9 came in around 52 dBA. The honeycomb was actually pretty impressive in the testing. I know it's just slightly below the GETF 34X25. That's a really long name to keep saying. But in real life, this thing was whisper quiet. I can almost I couldn't even almost couldn't even tell it was on. Let's see if we can move in the air now. Now, in the smoke test, the Vortex 9 and the YACF did look a bit chaotic, especially when compared to like normal, more standard axial style fans. Now let's see if that will translate into static pressure numbers. The honeycomb came in at 1.5 millimeters of H2O. The GETF 34X25 came in at 2.3. The YACF came in at 2.9. And the Vortex 9 came in at 5.4, placing the Vortex 9 in first place, the GETF 34X25 in second, the YACF in third, and the Honeycomb in fourth. And overall, they finished second, 15th, 16th, and 20th, respectively. So today we learned that, unfortunately, the Honeycomb design, although very popular, I've, you can't imagine how many Honeycomb style fans I see submitted to the fan showdown, but they just never do that good. They look cool, but in airflow testing and in static pressure testing, they just don't do it. Also, we learned that the Vortex 9 is simplistic perfection. And I'm guessing, based on looking at the uh, smoke test, that optimizing this gap and maybe the geometry of the fan, you could probably get even more performance out of it. So if you're watching, and you're thinking about making a design, maybe maybe think about doing something creative here. But anyway, thank you guys all for watching. If you want to support the channel, um, get subscribed to the channel. That'd be very helpful, much appreciated. And again, if you want to get in on the fan showdown to make what you think is the best fan in the world, or maybe you have just a really clever, awesome design that you think will look cool, uh, get down there in the description below. Pick out the links, go to the uh, go to my Thingiverse, grab you know references of the fans, grab the dimension sheet, and send your designs to me. Remember, I need at least a .stp or a .stl 
sent to thefanshowdown at gmail.com. I'll print them out, and we'll see how good you actually are. Until next time.